So this is the second part of 8.1 is looking at probability distributions, which we've already done. It's just we're re-looking at it again with our random variable x. And then we're going to add a part to this. The new part is going to be drawing a histogram, all right? a histogram that represents the probability distribution. And it's just how in statistics, oh, how in statistics we represent probabilities. Right, because graphs we use graphs for a lot of things in math because they're a visual aid to see the pattern, the behavior. Right, graphs gives us a visual of what's going on. How we set up visuals of probabilities? Well, there's a very, very specific way to do that. It's a very special type of bar graph. It's special. Um, it's set up in a very specific way. All right, it's called a histogram. It's a histogram is a special type of bar graph. Uh, that represents probabilities. All right? the, how it's represented and why it's special is because the width of each bar is always one unit wide. Always. No more, no less. Not two units, not a half a unit. Always one unit wide. Because it represents the one number. All right, so one unit wide. The height of the bar is the probability. All right, so it's a fraction. So if the probability is a quarter, 0.25, well, that's the height of the bar, 0.25. That's the y direction. Draw the bar, you make sure the random variable x is in the center, all right, so if 4 is your random variable x, it's in the middle of your bar. The width of the bar is half a, or a full unit, so you go a half a unit up to 4 and a half, and a half a unit back to 3 and a half, and that's how you draw your bar. All right, so they go between the halves, because it's one unit wide, and so your number that you're looking at, so 4 would be my number, it's smack dab in the middle of the bar. And then the other thing is, is all the bars should touch. They're not separated. All right. So when one bar starts, the next bar, so when, when one bar stops, the next bar in my graph should start. All right. So they're touching. All right. So it's a bar graph. They're touching. My number's in the middle of the bar, one unit wide. The height is the probability. We do this because we want the area to represent probability. That's why we set it up the specific way. We want the area of my, my rectangles, my bars, to be equal to the probability of that value. And so then the total area of my histogram should always equal one because it represents the distribution, which is all possible probabilities. All right, so we're gonna practice that in a couple of examples. All right, so the first example, suppose we have a fair of distinguishable foresight. So we have two pyramid shaped dice. So the dice have the numbers 1 through 4 on it. The random variable x assigns the outcome, the sum of the dice. All right, so we're looking at how much the dice. So part A is first write down the sample space, record the value, and then we'll do the histogram. All right, so it's on the next page. Okay, so it's just like, I just wanted to do the histogram there. I was, I was a little down there. All right, so first A and B, I'm going to kind of do together. A is write down the sample space, uh, then record the value of the random variable x for each outcome, construct the probability distribution, and then we'll get to the histogram. All right, so first the sample space. So my sample space, which is my universal set S, would be all of the outcomes. Well, if I roll a four-sided dice, this is a four-sided instead of six-sided, and so there should be... 16. All right, four on the first dice, four on the second dice, four times four is 16. All right, now I'm going to list them out so I can see them. So I can get a one and a one, a one, two, a one, three, a one, four, and that's it. We stop at four. It's a four sided dice. Two, one, two, 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 three, and so on. And then four, one, and we stop at four, right? It's only a four-sided dice, not six. Made it a little smaller. Um, instead of having the six, which is 36 outcomes, I wanted four, so it's 16, so it's a little smaller, right? All right, so there's A. There's A, well, except for my random variable X. My random variable X equals the sum. And so I get a sum of one, a sum of three, four, five, six, all the way up to eight. So my numbers are two, three, four, five. If I'd done a six-sided dice, it would go two to 12, right? Because then go up to six, six. So that's why I did this one just a little smaller. All right, the probability distribution. My random variable X represents the number of outcomes, then it's the probability my random variable
variable x equal that specific number. So my numbers are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Get more room. Let me draw it over a little more so I have a little more room apparently. I am running into that spot. So x, probability x equals my number. All right, so now it's the probability. Well, the probability of rolling a two, right, probability of rolling a two, well, there's only one of those, one out of six. And I'm gonna leave it one out of 16 because it'll be easier to draw the histogram if I leave it in terms of 16 Probability of rolling a three would be two out of 16. Probability I get a four would be three out of 16. Probability I get a five, four out of 16. Probability I get a 6, 3 out of 16, and probability I get a 7, 2 out of 16, and then probability I get an 8. Again, I'm going to leave them 16th, so if I add those up, the sum would be 16 over 16, which is 1, right? That's how probabilities work. So none of this is new. This is The only kind of new part is saying it's the random variable x, that's it. The distribution itself, finding it, is nothing new that we did in Chapter 7. Now, I, like I said, I'm going to leave the fractions because I think it's easier to do that. When I set up my histogram, it'll be easier to scale my histogram if I do that. And so now the new part. All right, so the new part is our histogram, which is how we represent probabilities visually right, by graphing them in a histogram. So remember, the histogram is the x and y plane. can't draw straight. So x represents the sum, right? That's what x represents. This is the probability. Right, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Then why I left 16th is because that's how I'm going to mark off my probability, by, by the fraction. I'm going to go 1 16th, 2 16th, 3 16th, 4 16th, and that's as high as I have to go. So this represents the probability of 1 16th. The next one will go up by 16th, so it'll be 2 16th, 3 16th, 4 16th. All right, these are my fractions, my probabilities, which is why I left them as fractions. It just makes it easier to scale. All right, now I draw my, my special bar graph, right? The bar graph would be every bar, again, has one unit wide. The height that represents the probability. And so my first value was 2, right? 2 here is what I'm going to draw my first bar with. So my x value is going to be in the middle of my bar. My height is going to be 1 16th. And so that means I go up to 2 and a half and down to 1 and a half to start my bar graph. So I go between... So that 2 is in the middle of my bar, right? That's what I need 2 to be in. My unit width is 1, right? 1 and a half to 2 and a half is 1 unit wide. The height goes up to the probability, which is 1 16th, so I draw it. And there is my rectangle, all right? My rectangle is the bar. Its height, right, which would be our 1 16th, its width is 1, which makes its area equal to probability. Area is 1 16th. The area of this is 1 16th. 3, I do the same thing. So where one bar stops, the next start, so 3 is going to start 2 and a half, then it's going to go to 3 and a half. Its height was 2 16ths. All right, so its height goes here. And there's the bar. This bar would be 2 16ths, would be its area, not 2 twelfths, 2 16ths. 4, same thing. It'll start 3 and a half, stop at 4 and a half. It goes up to 3 16ths. And then five, that's two and a half, five and a half, four and a half. Five goes up to four sixteenths, that's my biggest bar. So that's four sixteenths, and then it works itself down. Six to six, so five and a half to six and a half, next bar. Three sixteenths, seven goes from six and a half to seven and a half. Two sixteenths. And then 8 goes from 8.5 to 7.5, and, and it's back down to 1 16th. Right, which is
which means my sum of my area is one, just like the probabilities are one. And we do that on purpose. And so this one's kind of nice. This actually has symmetry. If you look at this example, right? Uh, it's got sort of, it's a nice kind of symmetry looking thing. The probability at the ends and the middle are the same. Five is your best chance, right? You're gonna get, that's the highest bar. The best odds are to get a five or sum a five out. All right, and then it's kind of stair steps. Right? It gives you a visual of what's going on in your probability. It's just kind of nice to see. And so that's what the histogram does. It gives you a visual of how the probabilities pan out. And this one's sort of a nice, pretty one. Next example is not gonna come out so pretty. All right, so the next one. My bag contains, so this is a bag of marbles. Remember I said we're not gonna get away from bag of marbles. We still gotta do combinations. All right, so we have a bag of marble that contains four red, three blues, two green. Five marbles are to be selected at random. X counts the number of blue marbles. Construct a probability and a histogram for the random variable. All right, so I need to pick five. It's a marble example, so I will be using combinations. And then what do I have to do? Well, X counts the number of blues in the handful. And so that's going to be how I break it down. I'm picking five. And so I'm, I'm counting blue marbles that can be in my handful. So I'm going to separate my marbles into two categories. They're blue, which is what I'm counting, or they're not blue. And so we've got the number of blue. There's three blue. And that means there are six that are not blue. Six that are not blue. They're either green or red. But all I need to know is they're not blue. Because they're part of the problem that I'm not counting, but I still need them. It's kind of like when I counted the men and the women. Right? And I have to count men, but I have to make sure that I fill out my group. So I need the women to fill out my group. Same thing here. I want blue. But I need to finish my group of five by having the non-blues who are part of the problem or at least part of my figuring. All right, I'm gonna draw it sideways here because it's just a little easier to put on my page to do it sideways. So I'm gonna let my random variable x go up top and then the probability x is my number go on the bottom. All right, so I can have, well, how many blues can I have? Well, I can have a handful with three blues, right? Because I've got enough other marbles. If I have three blues, that means I needed two non-blues. Right, I can have two blues, right? Because I can, have enough non-blues to finish out my handful. I needed three non-blues in that case. One blue, so I'll have enough non-blues to finish out four in that case. And I can have zero blues, right? If I didn't get any blue in my handful, meaning all my marbles are red and green, I can do that because there were six red and green, right? So I could still have five colors, five marbles in my hand that weren't blue because I have enough of the other colors to finish it out. And so there's my x values. And now I have to do probability, which this is where, all right, I'm going to do my sort of work below this, so work to find my probabilities. Well, probability, and, and I usually start with easy, I'm gonna use the fact that remember the sum of this is gonna be one. So I only have to find out a few of them. The easier cases to start with are always the all or none. And so I'm gonna start with the all first and then I'm gonna do the none. All right, suppose I get three blues, remember that's what that represents. So I'm looking for the number of outcomes where I get three blue well, I have to finish my handful, right? I want to pick five all together. It means I mean two that are not blue. All over the universal case. Right? And these are always going to be the universal case because um, there are no conditionals. So they're always all my basic cases. All right, so combinations up top, I'm going to get all three blues. Combination, I want two of the six that are not blue. And in the bottom, I can get any color, blue or green or red. And so five from any of my colors, well, there were nine colors to choose from, right? Three and six, nine. And then you type that out in the calculator. And if you type it out in the calculator, three choose three is one. Uh, then I do six choose two, which is 15. And then nine choose five, which is 126. And I'm gonna leave it 15 out of 126. So this is the probability of getting a three is 15 out of 126. All right, next one is I'm gonna do is the zero case. So probability, I'm actually gonna erase my list because I wanna do my work because I wanna see everything. All right, so I'm just gonna erase this and work here. All right, so I've got that one. Now I'm gonna do the zero case because it's the other easy case. So I'm gonna get the zero. So those tend to be the easy case, meaning no blues, right? So this is the number of groups with no blue. 
which means all five come from the non-blues, divided by the number in my universal set, which is actually the same as I got before, which is the 126. I don't have to find that again. I just have to figure out the top part. Well, the top part is, so I have no blues, which means I'm picking from the six that are not blue. So combination out of six, choose five. Six non-blues, I'm picking five of that out of 126. Well, six choose five, if I type that in the calculator, is six. So that's the zero case. So remember, it goes here in the zero. So six out of 126. And then it's up to you to do the two or the one. I probably would go with the one case because I think it's easier. So I'm gonna find the one case. All right, so probably get one blue, right? That's what the X value represents. So number of ways to get one blue, which means I need to finish my handful with four of the non-blues. Still over 126, I don't have to find that again. All right, so combination, I get one of the three blues, or not or, and, so we'll multiply, I need four of the six that are not blue in order to finish out my handful. Three choose one, this is why the one's not hard because three choose one is three. Right? I don't even have to type that in my calculator. But I do have to type in six choose four. All right, six choose four is 15. So it's gonna be three times 15, which is 45. So 45 out of 126. Make sure I put it in the right spot. 45 out of 126 is the number of ways to get three blues. Now you could do combination two blues and three that are not blues, and that's fine, but you don't have to. This is again, kind of work faster, all right? In order to do this, only do the three easy cases. And then remember, they have to add up to one. And in this case, one means I need 126 handfuls out of 126 handfuls. So I've already counted 15 handfuls, 45 handfuls, and six handfuls. Take your 126, subtract the 15, subtract the 45, and subtract the six. So if you take your 126 minus 15 minus 45 minus six, that should leave you with 60. Right, and that's your last outcome. Now, if you could find it by doing combinations, and that's fine. All right, it's just up to you how you want to do it. So it just depends on how you want to solve it. So now I've got my histogram, or now I've got to draw my histogram. All right, so there's my probabilities. So I'm gonna erase this to give myself more room to draw the histogram that goes with it, because I have sort of scratch work on the other side. All right, so there's my probabilities. And now my histogram. So I'm probably gonna go by fives. I'm gonna go five out of 126, because they almost all, except for the first one, go by fives. So five out of 126, 10 out of 126, so that's what I'm gonna do scale by. All right, so now I gotta draw my histogram. So this is X, which represents my blues. This is my probabilities. Oops, actually, I might give myself a little more room. Draw this a little lower. Maybe, draw it a little lower. Yeah. All right, so my blues, my probabilities. So I do need to go over here to negative one because I have a zero case. Give me one two, three, and then four, because I have to go up to three and a half, right? Three is my last case, zero is my first case. So I'm gonna make sure I've got my halves in there. All right, then I'm gonna scale these by five. So I'm gonna go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So I'm gonna make sure I give myself plenty of room. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, right? This will be 60 out of 126. This goes by 5 out of 126. So each of these represents 5. So the next one will be 10, and then 20 out of 126, 25, you know, 30 out of 126, 35, 40 out of 126, you know, 5, 10, oh, I switched 15. So I've got the numbers right coming out of the way. So I'm going to try this again. So let's, I'm going by 10. So 5, so 10, 126, 15, 20 out of 126, 25, 30 out of 126, 35, 40 out of 126, 50 out of 126, 55, 60. All right, there we go. So they go by fives out of 126, right? Because again, the reason why I did that is because it, it 
all but the first one lands on a five, right? 45 is on a five, 60 is on a five, 15 is on a five. Uh, so it just makes it easier to scale it that way. All right, now drawing the histogram. So my first histogram is at zero, right? Zero is the first value. And so when I draw my histogram at zero, I still go up a half and back a half. So I am going to go back here to negative 0.5 and I'm going to go up here to positive 0.5, right? Width of one. So I go from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. Zero is smack dab in the middle, and I want it to be smack dab in the middle of my histogram when I go to draw it. And I'm going to go up to a 6. So a 6 would be slightly above the 5, right? So that blue first blue bar represents the 5. Just slightly above that would be my 6 out of 126. All right, then the next one goes over to 1.5. And so one went up to 45, so 45 is here, right? That's my 45. And so one goes up. And it gets a little messy here, but there's that's supposed to be at the 45, right? 45 out of 126. This was six out of 126. The two goes up to two and a half, back to one and a half. Two goes up to my, that's my big case, that's the 60, goes all the way to the top there. All right, so again, 60. And then three goes up to two, three and a half, down to two and a half. And three is at the 15, so 15 is here. And that's my 15 out of 126. And so this one's not as pretty, right? The last example was a nice, pretty, symmetrical case where we had nice symmetry. The marble case, it's not, right? There's hardly any, there's no symmetry at all. There's no real pattern to it. Two is your best chance. Zero is a very poor chance, right? It's barely any at all looking at the picture. It's a very small. Three is not much better. Two, two, and one, all right, those would probably be your more likely outcomes, right? You're more likely to get two and one uh, than any of the other cases. Right, so you're likely to get two uh, blues in your handful is the most popular outcome, but one wouldn't be out of the ballpark either. All right, so again, histogram gives you a visual of how the probabilities look, how they play out. Just gives you a tool to visualize what's happening. Area is always one. We do it on purpose to set it up that way. So it's a very specific bar gram where we set it up with histograms so that we get an area of one. All right, we'll stop there. There is one more page of notes. Uh, this is the last one where we do histograms, but there is one more page of notes where I'm going to talk about relative frequency tables um, and probability distributions in those cases. All right, so we have one more page to go.